down. Reel down again. <laughs> little step. Little oh my God. One or two at a time. That's, that's okay, insane. Hey, what's up everybody? Caleb here with the Fish and Fuel Podcast. I'm really excited about this episode that you're about to watch. Tyler Barnes, the North Carolina state record flathead holder, uh, came into the Fish and Fuel Podcast studio. We did a great podcast talking about a lot of information that's going to help you target state record size flatheads on your body of water. You're going to want to kick your feet up, tune into this great information, and enjoy the podcast. Hey, what's up, everybody? Caleb here with the Fish and Fuel Podcast. We're here to educate anglers uh, and, and, and do everything we can to try to help you be more productive on the water day in, day out. I couldn't be more excited about this guest that I've got here with me today. I mean, he's been here for probably the last couple hours and uh, or last hour or so, and we've already had a good time getting caught up and and uh, and and just seeing each other. Tyler, introduce yourself. Tell everybody your name, uh, where you fish, where you're from. Just kind of let our listeners know a little bit about you. Yeah, sure, Caleb. It's really good to be here, man. Um, I always enjoy coming to see you guys and. And uh, but my name's Tyler Barnes. I'm from Pikeville, North Carolina. Uh, predominantly, we fish. Um, I like to fish the Noose River, Cape Fear Rivers. Uh, starting to venture out to the James Rivers, uh, PD Rivers, just any of your local rivers. Um, I've always been more of like a river fisherman than a lake fisherman. For now, I like that. I like that. And Tyler is a very, very polite, very modest guy. He's not going to brag on himself, but dag on it if I'm not going to brag for you. <laughs> I brag on you all the time, by the way, oh, and uh, Tyler is not just any guest here on the Fish and Fuel podcast. To him, he is, but to, to everybody here, he's not. He is currently the North Carolina state record holder for flathead catfish. Tell us about that that fish, how big it was, um, how recent ago that was, and uh, mm -hmm. let our listeners know a little bit about that fish. Yeah, guys. So that was a once in a lifetime experience. So it was, it was, it was truly amazing. Um, I caught the fish July twentieth, twenty twenty, uh, on the Noose River. Uh, it was seventy eight point nine pounds on certified scales. That's a giant. It, man, I'm telling you, I had no idea what I had in the boat, Caleb. I really didn't, dude. Uh, but you know, uh, the greatest part about all of it, um, it was certified. It was super healthy, and was released alive for somebody else to catch it. That so is the nice thing. That is so super important, you know. Yeah. Um, if you're going to go out fishing um, for for these catfish of any size and, and you plan on catching and release, it's always really good to have an adequate live well and, and really invest the money in your aeration systems, your your recirculation pumps, and just keeping fresh water coming in and out of the tanks. And it, yeah. it'll really help you in the long run. Yeah, and you did a good job with that with it as far as – uh, keeping that fish alive and healthy. And there's a video. I know we shared it on our Catch the Fever Facebook page and on our Big Cat Fever Rod Series Facebook page of you releasing that fish and it swam off happy and healthy. I know everybody was was super excited. And and Tyler, we see state records caught all across the United States. We then we immediately go to that person's profile. We start <laughs> looking to see who this person is. And sure. Sometimes you're no matter who the person is, you're always super excited for them. And then sometimes you're, you know, you look and you're like, oh, okay. This guy said this was the first time he'd been fishing or he just goes fishing twice a year or something. And he lucked up onto a state record. And that is amazing that somebody, you know, looks into something. But you, on the other hand, if you're listening to this, Tyler did not luck into the North Carolina state record flathead, in my opinion. If you follow this guy, I mean, everywhere he goes on the river, I've seen you catch big fish over the years. Like I said, Tyler may not say it, but if you follow Tyler, go follow Tyler Barnes on Facebook. Look at it. 
his pictures and his his stuff speaks for him. I feel like this was bound to happen for you because you have honed your skills in as an angler and done so well over the years. I feel like your odds have always been, you know, super good. And I think they're really good again for catching another one. Well, man, I really appreciate appreciate the compliments, Caleb. And uh, yeah, you know, I do spend a lot of time on the rivers. Um, the I, I will say the more you go, the more time you put in, um, and the more you learn um, about how to fish move and where they travel and where they tend to hold up at <clears throat> and what baits they're after. Um, some, sometimes things change um, uh, depending on the, the water levels, the water temperatures, the time of the year. Um, you know, moon phases actually, um, believe it or not, have affected when I typically typically catch larger fish versus when i catch smaller fish for whatever reason you right. know uh but you know it, it's really all about the time that you put in the water being in the right places at the right time and just keep learning and keep going and keep going and keep going and if you find yourself not succeeding keep going that really is you just keep going you keep going i've been on the noose river with my father ever since i was a little boy um and he he passed away actually when i was 18 years old and from then on it was kind of something that stuck with me and uh it's really been and i ain't lying kelly it's been every weekend every weekend seriously wow that's wild man and everything you just said talking about the stuff you look for i'm already excited about this (laughs) podcast i hope my my memory cards have enough memory because (laughs) we're gonna learn so much and There's a lot of guys that listen to this podcast or watch this podcast, and they don't have that much time available to them to be able to or live near to a body of water or certain circumstances that allow somebody to be on the water a lot and really hone their skills. And they're going to be listening to this to try to speed up that learning process. Mm -hmm. And that's why you're here, uh, because you do put your time in. It's a proven success. You do really good every time. I know. Fishing every time is not good. We only post our good days. I ain't lying. But you're consistent. <laughs> sure. You're consistent. And a guy can really learn something and speed up that learning curve by tuning into this podcast and hearing what you have to say. So this podcast is titled How to Target a State Record Flathead. Um, that is something that you've been after. You're setting up every single time to try to beat your current record here in, in North Carolina. Mm-hmm. If 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 we're going out on the boat ramp and we're putting the boat in. Let's talk about what you're looking for as far as your environment that determines where you're going to fish, you know, in the river. Are you, when you're putting the boat in, a guy putting the boat in going to the river, let's say if, if it's a, a, a overcast day or a sunny day or the, does it make a difference if we've had a lot of rain, if it hadn't had a lot of rain? Describe a scenario, like if we were to go out there today, what, what kind of you're looking for? Yeah, sure. So, it, it, and it really depends on the rivers because river systems are built differently. Some are rocky, some are muddy, some are deep holes, some shallow all the way through, but we'll just use the Noose River in this example here. So, yeah. any time that I'm on the Noose River going for flathead catfish, typically I really start looking for flatheads in May june july august you know the summer months and really the hotter it is the the hundred degree super low water that is a that tends to be the best time for me to target a big flathead and where it's hot out there your clothes are kind of sticking to line you. man where you're drenched in sweat you've been catching brim on day you feel terrible i mean you are soaked that is really the best time uh, in my opinion. Now, yeah. you can catch big flathead catfish any day. You can catch them in the winter. You can catch them in the fall, summer, spring. It, it really doesn't matter. It's really about being in the right place at the right time. Uh, but as you were saying, if we were to go today and you said, Tyler, well, you know, let, let's get on some 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 flatheads. And I know the water's still a little cool right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, kind of the conditions. So what what temperature do you, I mean, is it, is it a certain period during the spring where you start to see them biting more and more? Uh, really right now, I think the water temperature is somewhere around 62, 63, 
that's starting to look good. The shadow running through the rivers, flags are starting to wake up. They're starting to move around a little bit. You can definitely catch them right now, no doubt in my mind, no right. problem. Is it the prime time? Probably not. Um, I really look around the high 60s, low 70s before they really start to full force. Um, you know, so, but a really good one, 75 degrees, I would say is a really good, okay, and there's no doubt that these flatheads are moving. They're not just held on the bottom in a deep hole, not moving because they're cold. They are ready. What is your approach when you see that 75 degree water temperature? What it, what it, what are you looking at? Let's start with before, actually, let's back it up to before you get uh, to the boat ramp to throw a line out for them. Bait. Let's talk about bait. Mm -hmm. All right. So a lot of times when I'm bait fishing, um, bait can get tough. Um, a lot of times, um, well, most of the time I'm using either live eels or I'm using brim or some kind of some kind of live fish, right? Uh, it could be a bass, it could be a crappie, but you can't, you know, you got to keep everything under the regulations and everything, mm -hmm. of course. So, so really, it's all about the live bait. And and something, you know, that I've learned over the years is there's no such thing as a bait that is too big. Um, it can be. I hit Caleb. I throw the most ridiculous size baits out, just thinking it's funny. Five as a, minutes as a joke. I ain't lying, and it'll be a twenty pounder. On a, a, a shell cracker, a bass, anything, man. It's really, once you start doing that and you get past the, you know, you, you don't you don't want to really use your little baits. If you're going for big fish, big baits, especially for flatheads. Um, now, can you can you catch big fish on big, small baits? Yeah, of course, no doubt. But for me to go out there and entice that big fish to bite, I've got to have big baits. And that, a lot right. of times that's, it is hard to come by. You just right. ain't got everybody ain't got a pond right. or a, a a a reservoir that's just slam full of huge baits. It just right. It just doesn't work like that. So, um, but a lot of times if I'm preparing for a tournament or if I'm just pleasure fishing or if I'm pre fishing for a tournament, I try my best to catch the bait on the river that I'm fishing. Right. Uh, right. And a lot of times if you put in the time to practice and hit the river banks and find spots, little creeks, you'll find out that there's so much brim, bass, crap in the river mm -hmm. that you don't have to go to a pond. You don't got to go to a little creek hopping, you know, catch five brim at this creek, drive 10 miles down the road. It's best to just kind of put your time in to find out where the bait source is on that stretch that you're looking for. Exactly. And that's, that's a really good point. I can't tell me how many times where I'm like, oh, well, shoot, I'm going to bring the boat to work and then I'm going to run to a local lake try to catch some brim where I think it's relatively easy and then go where if I just took the time mm -hmm. to go to the Dan River or the Staunton River and try to find those those nooks and crannies around where I'm putting in at to try to catch the bait, it saves you time and you're catching the type of bait, whether it's a war mouth, you're catching a ton of war mouth right there, you're catching a bunch of sunfish or a shell cracker or something like yes. that in that area, you're actually catching what is in that area area 100%. when you were saying that i was just sitting here thinking like man that's something just right off the bat i knew i could have done you know just put my time in and try to figure out catch where the bait that i'm trying to catch on you know that's hook and right. line to use for flathead bait absolutely man and, and and it sometimes it's hard to go to the river without any bait because then you're like man i've packed up i'm on the river i ain't got to drop a bait fishing you know if the river's flowing 100 miles an hour sure, sure. it's, it's gonna best be, to take some bait it's probably best to do it but it's yeah. slow and beautiful and pretty yeah i'm telling you if you it's nothing to sit in one spot and catch your 40 50 brim you know depending on it's like 30 30 per person but yeah if i can typically tournament fishing whatever i've got i've got two people with me uh me and, and, and another person yeah um and so you it but 50 brim caleb you can really catch 50 hand size brim really man in an hour right really right and a lot of time when you find them you found them right it, it, there's millions and millions of brim in the like right there's so many so i, I found it out over time now i used to go to ponds and catch little brim and and, and 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 stuff like that but getting more serious about it it's really best to go to the river catch a brim because then they're at their liveliest they're super healthy they're full of energy they're moving they're bigger it's just that is really what i've learned to be the best thing to do have let me ask you this because you mentioned that and i you know people have have told me this and sometimes i try to see if i can notice a difference as well 
Mm-hmm. And that is, is there a difference in the lifelong, uh, the, 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 I guess the, the, the friskiness of the bait or how long the bait lasts, uh, if you catch it at a pond versus catch it at the river? Mm-hmm. The, the, do you see any difference there? Um, not a whole lot. Okay. Um, not a whole lot. I will say a river brim mm-hmm. tends to be tougher than a brim from a lake or a pond just because it's always battling currents. It's just a yeah. tougher all around fish. Right. And the great thing is, is you're in the boat, you throw your little worm out there on a the cork yep. and put them in a live wheel. That's you right. Water, to, he's, he's in there. That's right. There's no stress and no. transporting them and putting no them into. Sloshing, no crazy. It's just and that probably has a lot to it too. And then you don't have to worry about shock. You know, a yeah. guy that pulling them out of a lake, you know, and the, wa- the water temperature is yeah. warm and they, Exactly. They didn't match the temperature or acclimate him to the temperature. You know, they go belly up and then you get to the river and you're like, wow, well, I hope they're eating cut bait today. Hey, well, I hope there's some nice blues swimming <laughs> through because sure. we're going to use cut bait. Yes. But, uh, well, that's that's great. So big bait, there's no such thing as a big enough bait when you're going out there and you're really trying to get on a state record flathead or just a big flathead. Yes. Um, you've seen that even the smallest flatheads, basically if it'll fit in their mouth. They will eat it. They will eat it. No doubt. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, all right, we've got our bait, you know, what are we looking for then if, if it seems like the flow rate and everything of your river is about normal, um, what are you looking for when you, you know, you put all your tackle in and, and now you're headed down the river, up the river, down the river, what are we looking for when we're stopping at a, 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 a potential really good spot for a flathead? Yeah, so that's really dependent on the time of the year, too. If the fish is spawning um, pre-spawn, that is, pre-spawn is, so I try not to target them when they are spawning. Mm-hmm. I kind of let, try. I try to let them do their thing, you yeah. know, let them do yeah. their thing, and then I catch them later, you know. Yeah. But pre-spawn, you know, the, their <clears throat> Noose River has a lot of curves, mm-hmm. got a lot of bends, got yeah. a lot of straightaways. So so you'll be coming on a straightaway. And this river's shallow now. It, it's, you know, on a good day, <clears throat> it can be, you know, like, what, three or four feet? Yeah. Three to five feet, <clears throat> probably. So 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 you're going down the river. Okay, now you're, you're approaching this bend, and on the outside of that bend, it's maybe 10, 12 feet or seven. It ain't even got to be deep. Um, It's got some structure in there. It looks really good. That is something to target. Now, is there such thing as a, this is where the state, you know the state records, no. I, right. He can literally, that fish can be anywhere at any time, in under any branch, under mm-hmm. any any tree, on a straightaway in three feet of water, under, yep. under a lock. It's really amazing um, where these fish will feel comfortable at. It's not, <clears throat> it's not always about deep water. So it's that not always a, about going in those outside bins and finding a log jam crushed up under the, the outside bin, and you're thinking, this is where he would be. You see him in a variety of other places yes. that you need to be looking for. 100%. Like, the only, I'll tell you this, Caleb, the only time I'm really fishing deep water is probably during the spawn or pre-spawn, you know. that That's it. Right. I know they're in the deep. They're under some stru- hard structure. Um that that's that's really it in the summer month and, and and whenever i say deep water to to give everybody an idea <clears throat> when i say deep water on the noose river it's deeper than your average depth probably yeah Pretty i would much. probably say seven foot to 20 right that is considered i think deep on the noose river now when the spawn is over with mm-hmm. and here you are targeting these flatheads and, and going for a big flathead you know what's that depth look like that you're trying to target then? Because yeah. some guys will say, oh, that's too shallow. You know, a, a 80 pound flathead, 79 pound flathead, he ain't gonna go that shallow or, or you know, what what depths does that usually look like? Man, a lot of times, Caleb, really, you'll find, and I've done it over and over and over and over, to, 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 it, to figure out the pattern of these fish. And I'm gonna tell you, I would say, if you're going to daytime fish for flatheads in the summer, <clears throat> I would probably stick to the deeper holes. You know, they kind of tend to go a little deeper, a little shadier. But as soon as it gets dark, man, those fish are prowling. They're looking for Once it, it starts getting dark. Once it starts getting dark, it's time to... Typically, I'll start out in a deepish kind of hole. It might be 7, 8, 10 foot. 
soon as it starts getting dark. Because that's I, a transition. You know during the day they were in that deeper, and you know that they're going to start moving shallower as the night goes on. That's right. So you start in the kind of the common area. Yeah, I try to start in the common area. And and, and really, like I said, 8 to 12 foot typically is what you're going to find. There ain't but a few holes on the entire river that's 20 feet, maybe like three. Yeah. Like, there's really not that many. Yep. And, and those holes, a lot of times they're a waste of time. Right. You can catch a big one there. But anyway, back to where I would start would be in a in a little bit deeper spot, fish it about 30 minutes or so and move. It's all about moving, 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 and just keep moving. Because a lot of times I've noticed these fish, he's going to hit it if he's there. Right. A lot of times you'll sit in these deep holes for hours and hours. Man, the, oh, the fishing's terrible. Ain't getting a bite. It's just ain't there. Right. He's just not there. But after that first spot, I'll move and I might fish anywhere between three and five feet. Three, some maybe six, depending on what it is. You know, it might be three foot over here where I'm targeting, but I also have some lines on this bank that might be six foot. Right. It really, once you learn that those fish are not afraid to go in, you know, two, three feet of water, you'll start doing very well. That's very good. well. I'm telling you, man, that I've caught some monster. F I caught a fish not too long ago. When he hit it, you seen, and he was, he was like 40, high 40. Yep. Anyway, he hit it, and you could see his fin look like a shark going through the river, man. I ain't lying. Right. I ain't, you, his I've whole, seen that. I've not, it wasn't a flathead. It was a blue. Yeah. It was on the James River, and we, it was about a foot deep of it, and you could see the, the V in the water from the top fin going was. across. Yeah. I mean, you could p see his back. Yeah. And I, I'm like. Big fish, too. Hey, yeah, and I'm thinking, I won't even expect them to hit over there in a foot and a half. Right. You know? That's and, right. And it's crazy. But the, but the real thing is, Caleb, is you, you kind of uh, imagine that they're hanging out in these deeper areas during the day, a little cooler on the bottom. That's probably where they're at. Right. Um. Then they start to move out of the deeper holes, start going on these straightaways um, or bends. It doesn't matter. They're, they could be anywhere. They're looking for bait. But They're looking for the, the fish. Exactly. They're looking for that. They got to eat. And yeah. where's the brim going to be? You got the fish where the bait is. That's the right. bait is typically shallow That's right. log jams. Yep. Um, if you're fishing on a straightaway with absolutely nothing on it, I ain't saying that you can't catch when you're swimming through. Right. Yeah. But if you're, if you're using that 30 minutes and move tactic, Log jam, log jam, log jam. If so you're fishing the most high probability areas because, you know, and it's so crazy. It, guys, if, if you don't fish this body of water that, that, that Tyler's talking about right here, it works everywhere because a lot of what you're saying, I 100% have seen it on the body of water that I fish in the Dan River at nighttime, you know, in the stretch of river where I got, there's this big drop off that goes deep and then We'll throw them up shallow, throw them down there deep. And then once it got really dark, or if it's 10, 11 o'clock, and we moved up to that spot, the big fish always comes from the shallow. Mm -hmm. Seemed like the blues hit more down deep in the hole once it gets real, starts to get lighter, it starts to get darker. Mm -hmm. What he's saying will absolutely can apply to your body water. And, you know, we have got up on those nothing straightaways kind of in the shallow. Mm -hmm. And you're kind of targeting those crews and flatheads going to the next spot but what you're talking about is you're hitting you're like i know i've got a certain amount of time or you're fishing a tournament mm -hmm. you're hitting the most high probability areas for a big fish in 30 minutes or so that's right and that is at night shallowish water that's got something that, hold, or, or holding bait that's much. that's exactly right caleb so in and in, in for an example um to kind of make that seem because i i know People thinking, well, man, that's everywhere. So where exactly, Tyler, where would you go? All, so there's a few really good spots, and, and and that can be on any river. But what you want to look for a lot of times is if you got them winding bends, them winding bends, well, that's that that's actually very good because when it winds, it's 10 foot. Then it's a straightaway that might only be 3 foot, 3 or 4. Then it's another bend. So them flatheads can stack up in those areas. So they, you're kind of sectioning and off and areas. You, I ain't lying, man. So I kind of, I before I go to any river, I'm looking at the maps. I'm saying, okay, well, I'll just pull up Google Maps, you know, look at the river, and I'll say, man, that looks like a good bend, but I know I'm not going to catch him there. I know there's probably one there, 
but I'm going to go 400 yards up river or down. That's a gamble. You never know which way he's going. Right. Um, but a lot of times I think it, that these fish tend to leave their holes and go down river. That's, and then at, in the morning they scoot to the bank and come back up to their hole. That's just what I feel. Right. But I do feel like obviously they can probably go either way. Um, but a lot of times I'll pull up the maps. I'll say, well, okay, here's some bins here. This looks really good. I'm not going to fish the bend, but right over here to two or 300 yards is a big log jam. I'm not worried about the 20 foot hole over here. Right. Right. I'm going to catch him when he's coming out here. And right. I, it's all about the time. But say I would, if, but if you were daytime fishing, you would have, you would have started with that deeper. Yes. But here it is. It's done got dark. They're on the prowl. Mm-hmm. You're going to that food source where you know he's headed. Exactly. And hit this log jam. And, and before I go out, I've already got every spot in my head. I know I'm going to hit that night. And it doesn't change. You Just stick with the plan. Just stick with the plan because it is the same thing. Tends to be the same outcome every time. It's like one day all they're just hanging in the deep. Now. They're deep than shallow. If we're talking about summertime, right, like, they right. start off typically deep and shallow, deep and shallow. But nobody really, I never go daytime flathead fishing, man, because yeah. it's 100 degrees. It's I'm torture. dying. It ain't even. It's torture. <laughs> it's it's rough at night. You got a million mosquitoes. Yeah. And it's, <laughs> yeah. And you're in the river, so there's not a lot of wind coming through. Yeah. You're, it's an oven. Yeah, it is. It is best to fish it at night. But, it really but is. It, it, for comfortability, definitely. for sure. Yes. So, but really, you know. <clears throat> Hitting hitting those straightaways, Caleb, with with those big log jams. Now, if you got a little tree that's hanging on top of the water and you don't even think it touches bottom, you're probably wasting your time. You're looking at log jam that's probably been there while kind of larger. And a lot of times, I'll throw on the opposite side of it. So if the current if the current's running this way, here's the log jam. I'll actually throw on the other side. Not every time. But some on spot, the back side on of the it, back, it creates a current break, and that flathead's oh. sitting there waiting to ambush. Okay, it's an easier approach for the flathead, I feel like. Right. Um, in your experience, that's where you've seen where you were most successful when you targeted them that way. That's right. That's yeah. right. Now I've caught them just throwing to the log jam. Sure. I've, throwed, I've caught them throwing behind it. I've, I've, you know, but really, a lot of times those flatheads will be cruising down the bank, and they'll stack up behind this log jam and this current break. And they'll just be sitting there. For my experience, flies don't really like a lot of current. Man. Right. They, they kind of like to be blues. I think they do. I think right. blues don't mind current at all. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the, the, these flatheads, they really are kind of lazy. Right. I feel, I feel like Caleb, when these flatheads are going out, they're lazy. They're they're, they're sneaking up behind something. And if they see a big old fish, they're probably gonna try to get it. You know. Right. <clears throat> but I don't think these 40, 50, 60 pound flatheads are wasting their time on little baits right i think they're gonna take all of their energy to get that pound and a half bass right or something that's just yeah that's how i think right but <clears throat> really i'll sit up on a log jam i'll put my brim on i'll throw them out 30 minutes at the max that's it and you'll find that <clears throat> when you move 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 you cover so many more areas and you're finding new areas if a guy's moving that much i mean it's forcing you to run your fish finder, kind of see stuff on the bottom or, or look at the yeah. bank and, and find new spots and find your go-to areas kind of. Absolutely. And that's, and I guess, you know, you put a good pattern together as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, and, and, and believe it, I've, I've fished the Noose River so long. I'm still learning. I'm still finding right. every time you experience something a little different. And, and Caleb, a lot of times, uh, after I go to these tournaments and, and, um, you know, just pleasure fishing for flatheads. Yeah. I've got a, like a, a notebook at the house and in this notebook, I've got when I went, what I was using for bait, the barometric pressures, the moon phases, the water level, where they were feeding, mm-hmm. um, what time I caught them, how many I caught, That's good. what bait I was using. And is that helpful? Yes. Right. Yeah, it is helpful, but. The only thing that I can tell that I've patterned out is they are deep in the day and they are shallow at night and they're moving. They're, they're, they're just moving at night. Yeah. And, you know, keeping a log. And if you're a guy who wants to keep a log, something that I did when I was really trying to hit the water all the time, I used to tell people, 
before Catch the Fever, my goal was to be the world's greatest cat fisherman. Now that is not my desire. Um, I feel like if you're trying to be the world's best fisherman and you're all that, you're you're one one has to suffer. You can't get into the gear and side and and really give it and make your one hundred percent best if you're if you're trying to sh- straddle the fence. So now my passion is working with the best anglers and making the best gear for those guys that want to be the very best. And when I was doing that, instead of keeping a, a, a written log, um, something I did that somebody might want to try, I was just thinking when you mentioned that I would go on, uh, I would, I would take a video of myself and say, I just put two fifties in the boat. Today is such and such. I would look at the fish fire and say, the water tip is 72. It's, it's April 20th. And, uh, I would put it on Facebook and put only me for only me to see. And then I noticed the next year at that time, if I was struggling, that video would pop up on my timeline because Facebook reminds you of all the stuff you were doing during that time. And I had a private album I could go back to and see. Mm -hmm. But I remember being at work and a video pop up and it's like, it's March 15th I'm uh, in Bluestone Creek. And man, we just hammered them drifting through here. And I'm like, here I am, you know, I talked to a guy last week who said they're hammering them up here and I've just not done well. I'm going back to where that video said this yeah. time of year and found that they were still in that same pattern. Mm-hmm. So there's a bunch of ways to keep a log. And uh, that's just something I did that would just remind me and pop up all the time. And I still, to this day, it says five, six years ago, hey, every day it's like, a, a, I'm up here in the river. I'm them. hammering them right now. <laughs> it's 33. It's, yeah. it's 30 degrees you know blah blah on the james river yeah and uh it's still yeah. cool to see and it gets me fired up when i was doing that but keeping a log is very detailed it's very good but you are talking about specifically for you fishing on the river where you're at you just you mentioned before we talked the podcast guys really just overthink it yeah and so that kind of made me think of that when you said that is they're deeper during the day mm-hmm. they go shallower at night so the kiss method don't then, you know, keep it simple, stupid. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. That's what I tell people. That's right. And that's what you're saying, you know, guys need to remember as well. Yes. I mean, absolutely. Absolutely. So it's one, a lot of times when I'm out there, Caleb, if I'm tournament fishing, I'm always trying to fit, pattern them out super quickly. Okay. I definitely know he's in the shallow. He's here. So I'm bouncing to area to area to area, and I'm and I'm doing pretty good. And I might have some a few fish, a few decent fish, um, c- come to weigh in. Man, this guy's got 120 pounds with three fish. Well, obviously, he done something better than I did. So the toughest thing about the Noose River is finding out what section of the river is the best at that time and that is something that is so almost impossible to figure out so really it's without a, spending your time out there daily or weekly uh, and it's still tough yeah now if you're out there and you're able and you're able to pre-fish and pre-fish and pre-fish and pre- oh yeah yeah you can find out where the fish are but a lot of people don't have that time a lot of people just have to go on tournament day or just on the weekend just pleasure fishing yeah um and a lot of times people will get discouraged when they go try to catch these flatheads because they'll say, man, I fished all night. I hit those log jams. I hit the deep hole. I hit everything. And it was just bad fishing. I don't, and I might sound crazy when I say this. There is some nights, Caleb, that fishing is slower. Mm-hmm. But I don't think there is one really such thing as a they the fish won't biting right i think they're always feeding Caleb. that's so funny and that goes to show like your knowledge in time and fishing because uh i have filmed previous episodes mm-hmm. and that is exactly what the other guy i, I want the really good guys on the show i really want guys that have you know really made a name for themselves or really just really good uh anglers on the water and that's exactly what they say too they say i I feel like guys were just moving to area to you know spot to spot in the same area and in that area they just won't chew in for whatever reason they're just maybe there wasn't as much current as in another spot that had a little bit more current Mm -hmm. that made the fish 
uh, feed more. That's right. Um, and they say the same thing. Get to an area where somewhere where the fish was bite. That's right, man. And that's I, what you're saying. I'm telling you that there's really, once you get that in your head, right, Caleb, that there's no such thing as the fish won't bite him. You're either where the fish are or you're not. That's on the rivers I fish. Now, I'm, right. not, I'm not sure about these other places, but, and this applies to PD River, Cape Fear River, Chowan River, right. Noose River, Tor River. If you're fishing and not having any bites, you need to make a run. You need to move. You're, they're not there. They're really just not there. Right. I have had trips where I start here, and I'm fi- I fish about three spots, and I'll say, haven't had a bite. I'm running 10 miles this way. Still nothing. Make an- I know they're here somewhere. Yeah. I'll make another, boom, 100 pounds. I'm going to sit here all night. And-, and I have to do that every time. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It- it, they're always somewhere they're more grouped up. And these fish tend to travel together a little bit. But um, you'll find that if you just keep moving, if you're not catching, keep moving. And when I say 10 miles, I ain't kidding. I'm 10, 20 miles down the river if, you, you know, if your boat's got the gas and everything. Yeah. It, and it, and it, can, it, can go from, it can go from, man, I ain't had a bite to, man, every rod's going off. I Man, the fish have turned on. No, the fish, the fish didn't turn on. They're just where they're biting. You're where they're at now. Because I have been there. There's a video I posted probably about six years ago um, on, it may have been my personal page on Big Cat Fever Ride Series. 99% of the time, it was me. <laughs> I say 99%. I'm sitting there. I'm like, man, why are the fish biting? Somebody's calling me. They're like, we're wearing them out, man. We're out here killing. <laughs> but that day, the shoe was on the other foot. And... They were miles and miles in another direction. And I was just in an area of the river where it was just being, it was, we were right. hammering. We caught an 86 that day. It was a PB for my, my uh, stepmother. I mean, yeah. and just big fish back to back. So if your boat has capacity or if it doesn't try to get as far out of that area as possible, like you're saying that to, to try to put yourself in a different situation to get, get more activity. Exactly. Now keep the same Principle. logic as far as how to catch the fish. It right. ain't, if you've hit, if you've hit deep and ain't had nothing, and if you've hit shallow and you ain't had nothing, you just need to move. Right. They're there, but but typically but during the principles the night, is at night, go shallow. That. So keep that same thing. Uh, keep that. Don't never change that. That's yeah. not going to change. Right. Um, that's not going to change. Um, just move, move, move. It's really all about moving. So, and a lot of times when I prepare to catch these or uh, prepare for a tournament, um, if I'm fortunate enough to go pre-fish i'll put in where i think the fish are and it really helps because you know how i said caleb we're gonna start here and we got to run to here and then here i'll go ahead and do that pre-fishing then as soon as the tournament starts i'm i'm where the fish are and i'm hammering them on it because right. odds are they're not moving from that area in just a couple days right uh if now if the water spikes up yeah it's gonna probably push them down um but a lot of times, that is what really helps. If you go pre-fish, 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 and got skunked and didn't catch a fish, Caleb, you don't need a fish there tournament day. Go, go just, to a different area of the water. Because they're biting. Right. They're biting. Right. 100%. That makes so much sense. And you mentioned, um, you know, if the river spikes, a lot of times you've seen where the fish go down. You know, in a situation like that where a guy, you know, some people, you know, they take off during the week. So, you know, the river's not as crowded. And they're like, man, I got that one. I got that. I took that Monday off so I can go at night yep. where I got the river more to myself. And it rains Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And they're like, man, it's going to be a blowout. Do you have anything that you've seen when the water's going, you know, a, a little bit faster than normal? Or if it is, you know, a little bit more flooded than what you normally see? Have you seen anything like that, like where you where you do something different? Mm-hmm, absolutely. So if I if I'm pre fishing in the in the rivers, you know, three or four foot deep or whatever, and I'm wearing them out, and oh man, it's supposed to rain four inches this week in the river, man. It's just it's just, it's just coming up, man. Yeah, I'm probably going to I'm gonna follow that hydrograph, and I'm gonna look, and I'm gonna see where I pre fished and where I caught them. And watch that water coming down the river. Because a lot of times on the Noose River, it can rain four inches. And it can be in flood stage in Goldsboro. But it could be, in, for example, Kenston or yep. Maple Cypress or Calpian. 
it can still be just as calm. So I try to catch that wave. And I know the fish were here, and I try to catch that wave and then cut them off and say, okay, they're running through here. Now, I'm a, it's, it's hard to do, but you can time it where those fish are cooking down river and you're just you're just spread out and they're boom, boom, you know, as they're really. Moving. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you definitely can. And a lot of times, if it's really high, it's, say if it's flood stage, right beside the bank, Caleb. Right, don't, you're wasting your time in the middle of the river. Tie off to a, like a little log jam or or right beside. And I'm talking, I'll have the boat here and I'll have, I'll drop it straight now. Right, they're cruising. They tend to be cruising right down the banks. They want it tight. Right down the banks. And, and, and now it does help to try to find current breaks, um, current seams. Uh, creek mouths, sometimes they'll be cruising, come off and, you know, hang out like a creek mouth or something. Yeah. I rarely, rarely target creek mouths. That, that, really? On the noose, there ain't really many good creek mouths to, to, to start with. Right. They're more like little ditches anyway. Right. But if a guy, you know, he was on a, a different set of river and he had like a, a, a bigger creek mouth where he caught bait or something like that in. You would suggest that he did target it? Yeah, I would hit it for 30 minutes. Right. I wouldn't suggest sitting there all night. And right. I, I wouldn't. I'm still going to use that 30-minute move yep. because it's so hard. You're, you're, trying, you're trying your best to figure out where those fish, at what level is it going to force these fish down? It, and that's so hard to do. It Because they're not just going to sit there and get pounded by the current. They're going to go with the flow. They're going to be cruising down. They're going to find a little cutoff. They're going to find a hole to dip in, a a hard drop. They're going to hang on the bottom of that drop. And that is things to target, too. But a lot of times when they're just, when it's low and that water's shooting up, man, these fish, blues, channels, flatheads, they are cooking, man. They are eating. Bait fish are getting forked. Because think about it. If all these brim are held up on these log jams and you're talking thousands and thousands and thousands of brim just cooking down the river right now it's full of shad man there's bait going everywhere right and where they would normally be held up they are forced to leave and all these bait fish hug the banks these fight heads and blues are hugging the banks and they're just caleb i've had nights man where i've caught over 30 fish man just that when you catch them just (laughs) right man i'm oh man it's your gave slam out you're like oh hitting again i love that he's hitting again yeah <laughs> i ain't lying man i love it idiot but but it, it's really all about being at the right place in the right time with the right bait you know that right. that's that's really what it is um uh you know it everybody's got their own tactics but i've right. looked and i've talked to other anglers and i have practiced and watched for example you know i could that same scenario it could be shooting up and I ain't catching a thing. I ain't catching a thing. But old old buddy, that's twenty miles down there. Tyler, I've got I've, I've caught a hundred fish. <laughs> you that's know, awesome. Yeah. Well, obviously, I missed them. Right. And they are already down there. I, yep. I under and that is hard to do. You, you don't right. know. You 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 really can't tell. Yeah. Um. But it it just takes a lot of time and yeah. practice and, and something like that. And that's good to have a buddy system. You know, I I know guys that are kind of lone wolf fishermen. Yeah. Um, basically they put their time in they don't really communicate to others they don't want anybody asking them you know kind of what they did and i understand that as well where my strategy always was a buddy system is always nice i like to go when i know there's going to be a couple of my buddies out there because if i'm a, a certain stretch of river uh and they're in a wholly different a whole different part and i'm not having any success i can kind of put two and two together and say okay i need to get down there but i think what separates really great anglers um from just you know just going out there and just weekend fishing with nothing wrong with that but if you're really trying to hone your skills i think at every opportunity you ask yourself why like if you're not catching anything and your buddy says man we're hammering them down here most people Mm -hmm. reel them up say okay we got to get down there heading that way (laughs) they yeah they never stop when they get there and say okay what was different about where i was let me look at the bank let me look at the current. What kind of structure was I fishing? What is he fishing? What does the bank look like here? What does the bottom look like on my graph? Mm-hmm. What's the water depth? What? And then they go home and they're like, yeah, we ended up getting on them. And then they didn't learn anything. Not a thing. So, you know, every time when you get on them, 
you know, try to pinpoint what the circumstances were. Exactly. And remember that for next time. Exactly. Yeah. And, and the more you go under under these extreme conditions, mm-hmm. the more you're going to learn. And that's just any trip at any time. But really, get out of your comfort zone. If you're sitting here with, well, man, I know last year I went and I was here at same conditions and I slaughtered them. Why ain't I catching? Like, you've got to learn how to. And it was tough for me, Caleb, because I'm t- I am stubborn as an ox. And it, yeah, when s- somebody says Tyler, you need to be doing this. Most of the time, I'm probably not going to listen to them. <laughs> but <Right. laughs> you know, I just—it's not because I I don't want to. It's just I'm stubborn. Right. I know what I feel like works. Yeah. And I don't want to change. It's hard but, to change. But you'll find out if you really do just c- take the time and just say, you know what, I'm going to do something I would never do. Yeah. You'll find out a lot of the times. Yes, that, sir. Like. Holy crap. Yep. I can't believe what's going on. Yep. Like it's really insane. You got it, but it's hard to do that, Caleb, because Saturday only comes once a week. Yep. And, and when you go, you're like, all right, fishing this spot, this spot, this spot, this spot. I'm going my comfort spot. No matter what. It's hard to spend your weekend doing something that you just Yeah. I have no idea what I'm just gonna throw out here. Yep. But the more you do that, the more you go, the more you can put it. Everything starts to make sense where these fish right. move and what they do. And stuff. it's really interesting. It's really amazing. And that, that, that applies on every river. And that's why these this Fish and Fuel podcast exists because Saturday only comes one time that week. And there's fundamentals that you can do. It's, it's like a bore site. Mm-hmm. This podcast is a bore site for your fishing. You know, we can get you on paper. We mm-hmm. can get you in the right spots with the fundamentals, but you know, it's your job once you're there to dial it in yeah. to be, to hit the bullseye. So, you know, there's fundamentals that, you know, when you go out and you do something different that you still, you know, would follow to the core to, 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 to at least get you on the paper. And in summary for, you know, fishing when the, when the river is high or rising, you mentioned a lot of things, but what's two or three things that you say, guys, you should definitely check this. You know, like you said, um, fish close to the bank. 100%. Would that be one of them, real that, close to the that bank? That would be 100%, man, because a lot of times in the middle of the river is gushing, man. There's there's trees, there's trees floating down. That's the safety concern. Yeah, that's right. I, when the river's high, you will never find me in the middle of the river. Right. Just because I don't want to get taken out by a forty foot tree, right, <laughs> you know no. what I'm saying. So, but really, it's full of trash. Your leaves are all up your line and everything. And and, and speaking of leaves, because that's that's I get that a lot. Tyler, man, what, how are you catching fish with these leaves all up? Doesn't matter. The, I, look, I'm catching fish, and I'll, I'm pulling in four foot of leaves. It, it really doesn't matter. Wow. It, it really to me. If you're where they're at, they're going to hit it. They ain't right. worried about the leaves. They they live in the water, sticks and trash and all kinds of nasty yeah. mud, you know. Yeah. But they see that piece of, that, that brim just sitting here beside the bank doing this number. He's on them. He ain't worried about the leaves. Yeah, he's going to eat the leaves too. He's going to eat all of it. He's, he's like going, us. He's yeah. going to eat the meat. He's going to eat the steak and the salad really? at the same time. Exactly, man, because yeah. it, it just ignites them. Like, right. Like, when that water's rising, it just. I, I I guess a lot of times in the summer it'll cool the water off a little yeah. bit, more oxygen. It's just boom, a feeding frenzy. They're and, charged. And if you're not catch when the up water's high and you're not catching them, that is the best time to catch numbers. Right. Uh, it's a lot harder for me to catch larger fish when it's high. Right. In our rivers, but or Noose River, um, just because it is because you don't really know where to held up. They're forced out of their holes. They're forced out of the log. That's kind of a harder thing to do. So right. a lot, and, and a lot of times I'll I'll switch over to blues really right. uh, when it's something like that. But yeah. but really hanging to the bank, trying to find you a little current break. If you do find a creek mouse, you know I would hit that, um, and just keep moving. Now I tell you one thing that works really good. These fish, like I said, they're cutting, they're they're, they're cruising right beside the banks. Right, and, and just a foot, man. I just here's the bank. Here's my bait. Wow. I mean, in a foot away, it doesn't matter. They're, they're on it. So, a lot of times on the Noose or Cape Fear rivers or any other river, you'll find, man, there's a super hard bend. Well, don't fish that deep side of that bend. You're really wasting your time. A lot of times they're going to be on that inside of that bend, cutting right on the inside. And whenever you come around that hard bend, Kayla, that because you got to think the water's coming this way and it's rushing, but over here 
it's kind of calm. It is. And it's cooking. It's beating that bank over there and wrapping around. And it, I mean, it's just creaming. But I'll be right on the inside of that bank, throwing my baits right down there, and they'll come around that bank and bam a limb. I mean, boom, right. Boom, you know. So that would be like a number two is like look for slower current for those fish like on an inside bend. Mm-hmm. hundred percent. Main thing, man, really just hit. Um, stay as close as you can to the banks. Find, hit any kind of little current break you can, because that I mean there really can be a fish held up there. Um, at any time. Uh, and I've had times, you know, well, man, I know that this is a really good spot. I'll start there, and then I might come back three hours later, hit it again, because I know those fish are moving. Right. So another one might be held up there, right. and then I might hit it for the morning bite. Right. Uh, and really, it, it just it is tougher when it's high to really say where do i need to fish right but i promise you you can be just tie off you'll find out there's no secret spot there's right. really if you're going down the river and it's flood stage oh man there's a big tree that's fell over just go behind that tree tie off and throw it and i i, I bet you'll be surprised yeah i bet you will absolutely um, absolutely and and, and and they it seems you know that they're just Holding, holding to the banks when it's high. I, yeah. You know, I guess that's, that's where the bait and everything else is held, and that's where they're going. That is, I mean, that's super key. I mean, that, like I said, that, that puts guys on paper when, you know, those days come where it's not just ideal conditions. You know, they've got some something else that, that they can look at. And I feel like that, I mean, I feel like, oh, my gosh, we've learned so much already in this podcast. And, I mean, it's just been so much good information. And, you know, the state record flathead you know, the spot you were fishing, how long, you know, describe like that spot. Were you fishing a log jam? Like, do you, were you fishing in front of it, behind it? Was it slow current? Um, you know, basically, we're not trying to learn about your spot. We're trying to learn about the habitat that a state record flathead really likes because he was there for a reason. He stopped there for a reason. Describe, um, not not pinpoint where you're fishing, but describe that location you know, what that fish you think he was doing there. Mm -hmm. So, sure, and that's no problem. So, really, it was the most incredible night I've ever had in my life. That's awesome. Uh, you know, so, and Kyle, I'm going to tell you, to prove that these fish can be anywhere at any time, you just got to be in the right place at the right time. Right. I never fished a spot before in my life. Come on. First spot. No way. It was, it was that night. That goes back to your point of try something new try every now and then. New. And I tell you, I tell you how it worked, Caleb. I'll be, I'll be hundred percent honest with you. So in Goldsboro every year, um, typically the months of July and August. Right. Um, there's a, there's a, easy bait and tackle has a, has a catfish tournament and yep. really it's a big fish tournament you go fishing anytime you want to catch a fish weigh it in during the store hours and basically it's like a top three or top five first first place is biggest fish second you know so that trip that trip caleb i was sitting there in a it was hot i caught my bait that day dude i had the biggest bait it was like man these things are sh shell crackers really oh man they get up several pounds man look man i'm telling it was about this big no i ain't lying guys it. if you're listening on spotify or one of the other accounts where you're not able to watch this he's talking about i'm talking like a pound and a half bait here i ain't lying i ain't lying halfway up my arm man from my fingertips it's real. it dude and i had like it probably about 10 that size and, and when you put that thing caleb on a hook Oh my God! Were you using so you were using our big cat fever rods at this time? Absolutely, big cat. Fever, Are you still using big cat fever? I've actually got the Hellcats. Okay, I got the heavy. What power action. Hellcat do you use? Heavy, heavy action. How are you yes, liking sir. those? And those are the best things, man. They are they are sweet, man. Well, I good. wouldn't have anything else. I'm good. I, I'm glad that you're enjoying those. Yes, sir. At the time you said you had our big cat fever medium heavies. Medium heavies at the time. Yes, sir. Dude, and, and I love them. They, and they're all great rods. Yeah, man. you know they, yeah. they can handle anything that you hook to them. But I'm gonna tell you that. I tell people, you know, uh, the big cat fever rod is one of the things where they can get into and they can go catch a state record and be able to handle it. Because if you have the wrong gear, 
that fish, you might not get it in. Yeah. So even our big cat fever rods are great rods. It's just, it's the Hellcat rods is just, it's a, it's a different rod makeup. It's yeah. got a lot of carbon in it. It's a lighter blank. It's got a little bit more sensitivity to it. There's always options to upgrade, but you can't go wrong with a big cat fever, medium heavy, clearly. I and, ain't lying. and that just, we're just side noting here, guys. Um, Tyler, uh, in the pictures, part of our terms conditions is, is, you know, in the photos with your state record, you have to have a uh, catch fever on and, uh, Tyler got his swag on and, and got the picture and everything. And, um, and got paid $5,000 from yes, our sir. brand catch fever for catching that fish. So that just made it just an extra, yeah. extra nice night. Hey, you know? on, man, that was, that was awesome. Yeah. You know what I was like? Oh my God. Yep. And we got anybody who catches a state record on our products. We make a big deal out of it. We get our our film crew out there. We sit you up on the bank. We have drones flying around. We really interview those guys to figure out what they're doing. If you want to see that interview with Tyler, it was awesome. I mean, just listening to you tell that story and we're going to hear it again. We, we just got side noted. It just gave me chills and I was like so pumped about it. But um, man, what an awesome. I'm so glad you were using our gear. Yes, sir. We were able to come out there and document and film and capture that moment and that excitement and share it with America about your story because it was truly amazing. Oh man. So absolutely Caleb. Walk us through. You said you got this pound and a half. I mean like <laughs> from your fingertips to halfway up I, your arm. I ain't lying. And it's it was insane. Like it was almost like I've man, rarely do I have bait that good. Yeah. And people look at me, you can eat that thing? No. <laughs> no yeah, I'm, yeah. I hate to tell you what I'm gonna do with this yeah, thing. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. The guys on the bank on the way up there, they're like, Hey man, we're trying to catch something to go back and fry it up. You're like, I'm yeah. like, well, I'm gonna check this out. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. So so you know, and a lot of times, Caleb, for these bigger flatheads, I'm using a monster hook. Mm -hmm. Um I'm using the I actually prefer for flatheads the 10 all Charlie Brown circle hook. Yeah, yeah. And I'll take those circle hooks and I'll kind of put a little offset in them. Right. Um, That's just me. That's just my. Yeah, case. yeah. So I, and, I'll, and I'll take that brim and, and, you know, we'll use this water bottle here, Cal. Mm -hmm. and, and, and say this is the head and this is the tail. Right. I'll take that hook and come at an angle through the top of the head. I right. don't hook them in the back. A lot of times I've done that. And a lot of times I'll reel in and notice the hook has somehow. Double hooked it. Got. And I've lost so many fish. I was right. like, man, there's got to be a better way. They torque the rod down, and then it comes right back yeah, up. It's like, and pull I, it I out of their like, mouth. He was ripping, dragging. How did I not hook him? Really, right. it in the hooks in the brim. Uh, great. So you're going from the dorsal fin with the hook point coming towards the angle head. toward the head. The front of the fit. Yep. Gotcha. And, yep, man. And um, so anyway, back so, so back to it, Caleb. So, I, you know, I'm sitting in this spot here, and uh, and I'm starting off deep. And it's uh it's probably it's probably about fourteen foot probably yeah. in this hole right here. So I'm taking this brim. Well, first of all, I, I tell you, I'm gonna start from the beginning. Got to my spot, Caleb, and I said, and, and I got on my hands and knees and I I said a prayer. I remember you telling I me did, that I did, Caleb, and, and I tell anybody. And it was really, you know, sometimes you got things on your mind about you know, and it's Always. just how you know i just need some help you know yep so i'm fishing and i say god i say you know please show me that you're with me yeah and, and my dad's here and we're together and just show me something incredible tonight and i, I promise on my life caleb that is exactly what i said i remember interviewing you years ago when you caught the bit and you said the exact same thing and and it was yeah i did man 100%. so so I said, okay, sorry. Right. So and, and keep in mind on this day, July 20th, 2020, it was probably 95 degrees, no wind, all the mosquitoes you could ask for. And man, I'm telling you, uh, I'm dying. I'm like, I've got to cool off some. I'm just sweating to death, just sitting there. <laughs> right. But I knew that was perfect. That's man. right. That you know, that's the, the conditions you like. So slow water. But anyway, I'm sitting in this deeper hole, edge of, edge of dark. I'm sitting there, I'm fishing. And all of a sudden, have one go down. I'm like, oh, man, this, this is him. This, you know, this, this is the one. Yeah. And, uh, well, no, I wasn't. So yeah. it was like a little channel catfish. <laughs> so I was like, oh, man. Yeah. You know, so anyway, I said about 30 minutes, 30, 35 minutes, um, something like that. I would reel in. And 
I moved to my next spot. Um, I fished. I didn't have a bite. Sat there another 30, 35 minutes. Sometimes it's hard to move every 30 minutes when you got 10 Hellcat rods with all these giant, sure, sure. you know, by yourself. So I'm, oh. oh, if you're by yourself, yeah. And most of the time, I, I, I'll sit longer. Even if I am doing a 30-minute rule, yes. sometimes it's just man, it is. 30 minutes reeling them in. It is. It's like, I just sat down. I know. <laughs> hey, 30 like, minutes is up already. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, so, and I'm, so I said, well, all right, well, I'm going to reel in. And at this time, you know, Caleb, it's probably, it was around probably 11.30. So I'm reeling in. And, I, and I'm cooking down the river. I said, I got a spot in mine. I think I know where he's at. And I'm cooking. I'm going. I'm going. And I look at this log jam as I'm going by. And I turn my head. I'm like, no. Okay. I, ain't, I ain't never really noticed that, really. Yeah. So I said, I kept going, kept going. And then I was like, no. No, something is really telling me I need to turn around. After I went like half a mile, I said, I'm I'm, I'm going to go hit it. I'm going to go hit it. So I, got, I come back to this little log jam. And it's five foot deep. I said, I'm wasting my time. I'm wasting my time. You know, um, I, it wasn't even special. There was nothing. Yeah. It was just a little old tree. It wasn't nothing, no giant, super 10-foot-tall log jam. It was just a little tree. On yeah. the, on the, so I threw I threw my anchor out. I floated past the log jam. That's what I was going to ask you. How would you set up this, on that? Instead of throwing towards it, right? I, I drifted past it, tied my anchor off, and... I said, you know what? And I've used this one shellcracker from the first spot and the second and the third. And I said, man, he's, he's getting kind of weak. And I yeah, said, I'm going to get yeah. one more spot out of him. Yeah. So I'm taking this big shellcracker and I lob it up river, which is tough to do. That's why your gear is so important. Because when he hits, you got to think you're right in the tree. Right. You got to stop him right then. Right. And look, I threw up river probably, I was probably maybe a good three, three foot away from the log jam. Um, and and I'm sitting there, and I've got all the other rods down. I sit down and stuff, and I'm on the phone with a buddy of mine. And all of a sudden, I, I see that thump. I was like, "Okay." I said, "That's a big bait, man." I said, "And it and here it is, just rocking." I said, "I said, well, Jacob, I, said, I got one on, man. Let me uh, let me let me cover right back." I said, "I ain't sure about this fish." Right there, real quick. Uh huh. It sounded like your reels were engaged. Mm-hmm. Some guys fish with the clicker, sometimes real, real engaged. What do you do? I am engaged, okay. and I've got that. Because drag. you're fishing so close to the structure. That's right. I, you can't let them run. All right. All right. Perfect. I just wanted to know that because I know some guys use a clicker, mm-hmm. and that can be fine on those straightaway areas, you know, mm-hmm. sandbank or something like that, you know, where you can let them have it. Oh, yeah. But when you're tight to the structure, you've got them engaged. Is your drag locked down? Uh, not all the way, not but the way. it is tight enough to where. You could turn his head. He's. If he pulls drag, it's a good fish. Yeah, okay. I know when I got a good one. So, yeah. so, so he thumped it. He so he thump, and I'm and a lot of times when these larger fish hit, they don't always cream it. Right, a flat hit. A lot of times you'll you'll sit there and you got your rods out, and all of a sudden this rod over here just goes thump, and you're like, and then all of a sudden it's rocking. Yep, and it's rocking, and then it's rocking, and then it, he buries it, and then yeah. he's on. That that's a typical big flathead. There's so many. This is crazy. It's deja vu. I just, we just did a podcast and I told a uh, guy, Timothy King, about this. Uh, I, I said, uh, the bigger they are, the slower they pull. They're lazy. They are. Yep. And there's in, they don't have a reason to be in hurry. Yeah. Who's going to take it from a they state record flathead? Him. They yeah. already got it. He exactly. said, well, got him. Yeah. You that's know, right. Ain't no worry about it. I'm just cruising down the bank. So no need to hit it in a fury yep. and take it. So he's soaked him up and, and, and so the same thing happened. So I was on the phone with Jacob. I said, man, I said, that's, let me, let, let me call you back, man. I said, something's on this one. And remember, I'm throwing up river. So as the rod starts to go down, I said, okay, I picked the rod up because I can't, in some situation, I would say probably 80% of the time, I'm waiting for that fish to slam it and hook himself. Mm-hmm. That's, that's why I keep it engaged. I feel like that's what the circle hook's for. Right. A lot of times when that fish, he just sucks it up. Man, his, fish, his mouth's this big. He's going to suck up the brim. He's going to ch- hold him down. He's going to run. It's going to try to pull out his mouth and hook him in the jaw. So, mm-hmm. so I feel like if I'm not engaged, if it's not locked down, then I feel like I'm missing him. Like right. He's already got it. Yep. If he feels anything out of the ordinary, He's probably going to let go. So that's right. just why I fish, you know, lockdown. Sure. He hits it. He runs when he buries it. And the, the action 
pulls back on the it, it set. He he's That's not right. going nowhere. So, but that fish, Caleb. So he he's going down, and I picked up the rod. In this situation, I couldn't wait for him to bury it because he's right beside the tree. So I pick up the rod, and I let him go, let him go, let him, and then I kind of sweep it. You know, kind of yep. kind of a soft, not a yep. snatch. You're simulating you pull a pull, pull down. That's right. Or a circle hand. hook. That's the way to set a hook. You sweep it. You don't snap it. That never jerk. Never no. start snatching nothing. Just 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 ease into it. And when you feel the pressure, then. Mm, you know, mm-hmm. bury so, it. And when I'm telling you, Kel, when I did that, come on, look, man, it was. I said, it, it, all I heard was splashing, boom, but all on the bank. And I said, I've got the biggest blue cat right now. Yeah, because I'm thinking so this, violent. I ain't lying. So he shot. And there's like a wake over there. I got my headlight on. I said, I said, good lord. So I crank it down about three or four clicks, and I turn and I pull, and I said, okay, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming, and then. Zzz, He's going He's that way. And drag said, up river. I said, man, I've got something going on here. Yeah. I said, this ain't ordinary. So I get him back to the boat, and he takes off again. I said, I just want to see him at this point. I yeah. said, I, if I lose him, okay, I just want to see what it is. Yeah. So get him inside the boat. How far? How long were you fighting it? How long was the fight? The entire fight, Caleb, was probably about three or four minutes so yeah, i mean you, you 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 had them locked down pretty good to where you were like if i could just see him i'll and be I happy just say, okay let's play yeah okay yeah that's right <laughs> so, that's exactly right yeah, really so so really it, it, and you gotta think you can't you never have any 20 30 minute stories or really anything over five minutes on the news because you got to think you're throwing from here to sometimes right beside the boat exactly. and it's three foot right so there's no possible unless you've hooked some kind of sturgeon or something <laughs> right you know, you're, okay you might have your hands yeah. full but, but your drag's pretty tight you're fishing close to the bank there's not a lot of line out so really it's just a lot of power it's just me against him yeah it's my tackle against him so that's right so and i'm sitting there and I, at this point i've I've put some heat on them. Not so much. You never want to really, because you never know how good that fish is hooked. That's right. Give him, you don't want him to get away from you, but you don't want him to, you don't want to panic and start. And that hook locking pulls. Because right. I've done it. I've yep. done it. You're, you know you got a big, you just got to stay calm and kind of just let him do it. Let the rod and reel do its thing. Right. It's meant to bend. That's right. The drag's meant to come in. That's why That's you right. got drag. Let him pull. Then when he stops a second, just pull him on back. Let him run again. But anyway, when that fish got him to the boat the second time, I reeled up and I was pulling. I said, he's holding. I said, man, this fish is holding tight for it to be four or five feet of water right here. And I'm like, and it rods bent. And I'm like, that's weight. This thing is stuck. You're, you're feeling the bottom. weight. I ain't lying. He's just, you can see, you can feel him swimming. The lines. Wow. I was like, this fish. You know. I said, okay. So I finally get him to the top and he surfaces. And. I got my net beside me, and I reel down close to the fish. And I got my net propped up on the console, and I'm trying to get that net, that net under this fish. I said, man, he won't go. It's the hardest thing to do, basically. Yes. Oh, my gosh, and yes. A little bit of current pulling the fish, yep. and then you're trying to get all up under him, and it won't work. It just ain't working. Right. It's like he won't go in it. So so he doosh, he takes off. I said, I'm going to lose this fish. He starts cooking again. I said, God, please let me catch Just let me, Just let me catch him. I need this fish. <laughs> so I put the net back up. I said, this time, I pulled him up to the surface, and I said, I'm about to lose it all. I said, I, I set the rod and reel in the boat and grabbed the line with my hand, and I'm over here bending over, Kelly. I'm like, I, where's his head? Where? Okay, there's his head. Oh, and then I got his bottom jaw with my hand. Really? Yep, right Adrenaline by. is yeah, going at this point. Like, you I, didn't care. if I it, You were taking the chance on it being anything at I this said, point. If he runs, my whole rod and reel's gone and everything. I said, look, man, I've got to get this fish. So I, I grabbed the line, and I'm pulling up, and I'm like, oh, oh, there he is there, a little further. Oh, got his jaw, and I said, okay. I feel like at this point, if the hook would have went in your hand, you wouldn't have knew it. I wouldn't have cared. I said, I don't care if the hook goes through me or not, man. I said, he's coming in the boat. Yeah. So so I got my, my right hand on him, and then I got my left hand on him, and I pick him up, and then I just oh, I pick him up over the boat and put him in the floor. And I'm looking at this fish, Caleb, I'm like, what is going on here? Wow. I said, what is this? You know, and, and I'm like, that is a big fish, man. This is a big fish. Almost an 80 pound flathead. I ain't lying. It's insane. And and I'm sitting there. I'm sitting there. So I call, I call my buddy back and I said, man, I, he said, did you get him? I said, yeah, yeah, I got him. <laughs> and, and, and I said, well, let, he said, well, how big? I said, man, I said, I don't know, man. You go 20. I said, yeah. Oh, yeah, at least. <laughs> and I said, really? I said, this fish probably 
65 pounds. I said, he's he's big, man. Yeah. I said, I, then I got looking. I said, I said Jacob, I, man, I don't know. Flatheads will fool you. Yes. I can't tell you how many times I've seen a flathead come up and you see that big head and that big yeah. top body. And then you weigh them and your dreams are just dashed. So for anybody wondering, how did that fish, was it certified at like, you know, almost 80 pounds, 79 pounds, yeah. and he thought it was 65? They will fool you. Yes, and you know we get fooled all the time. Right. So you were shooting it kind of low. I was shooting because I, it, 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 at all times, I'm shooting it low. If yeah, I, I do say, I, I'd want to do the if same If I thing. think he's 50, I'm going to tell everybody it's about 12 pounds. Yeah, <laughs> no, no, right. no, 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 I ain't going to do that bad. But no, I, I'll kind of, if I, if I weigh him and he's 50 pounds, I'm going to say he's 45. Right. You know, that's just normal. That's so you right. don't get your hopes up. Yeah. But at the way, and oh, I thought I had 100. <laughs> You know, anyway, that's right. So, but no, so I said, well, yeah, I'm gonna, let me weigh this fish. I put him in the net, you know, kind of cram him in there. And I get my scales out and I pick it up. And I'm like, golly. And it's 80, uh, 82.1. I, I started laughing. I put the fish back down and cut my scales off and on. He said, what happened? I said, my, my scale says 82 pounds. I said, that, that ain't right. He starts laughing. And I'm like, okay. I said, well, I'm going to turn it back on. I did it again and it was 81.6. I said, 81. Six. I know the net weighs, let's see here, about two and a half pounds. I was like, oh my god!" And the current state record at that time was what? 78, even. Oh my God. So I'm like, oh my God. 71, the net's like two, two and a half. I said, holy moly. I said. I'm either on the money or just a little I over. I said, you ain't going to believe what I'm saying, Jacob. I, I, I have potentially caught the state record flathead, man. And we're tripping out and. I train. I get them in my toolbox. At the time, was what my live well was. Yeah, filled it, filled it up with fresh water. Yep. Um, G juice, all my pumps, all my aerators. It, he was super fine. Got him to the weigh in. Put him on the certified scales. And I remember at that point, mm-hmm. I had got the call. Yeah, this was like two in the morning. It was. And I'm about how long did it take you to get here? <sighs> about two hours. So it was about a two hour drive. Yep. I remember it was like two in the morning, something like that, or one in the morning. I get the call, and I, I don't know if it was you or I talked to somebody else. My phone was going crazy, <laughs> right. and I was like, what is going on? So I, I remember answering it. Tyler's got the state record, man. He's got he's got the state record. I'm just like, no way. Like, I'm just waking up in a dead sleep at 2 o'clock, and you said you were headed to Easy Bait and Tackle to put it in their big tank, mm-hmm. and I was like, Okay, how far is Easy Bait and Tackle? You know, they're a retailer for Catch the Fever products. Yeah. So I was like, that's, I've been there before several times. That's about two hours. So I was married at the time. I told my wife, I said, I've got to go. <laughs> and I was like, this, I, she said, how big is it? And I said, it's like 79, 80 pounds plus. And she was like, how is that a state record? I said, this is a flathead. Mm-hmm. And I've never seen a flathead that big. So, you know, I, it, it was just extra special. So I had just bought her a new Mustang. It was the uh, the 5.0. You were cooking. Oh, dude. I said, look, I'm taking your Mustang. I said, you can take my truck to work if I don't get back here in the morning. And I think I got there in like an hour and 20 minutes. Man, you were cooking. I was one. burning through that manual boat. I was using every every horsepower that Cody had in it. Hey, kid. And um, I remember I pulled up there and saw that fish and it's just remarkable mm-hmm. how big that flathead's head was it was really oh. absolutely insane it, the more I mean, i'm telling you from the time i put the fish in the boat my anxiety level from there to easy bait the way it was because i'm like if i'm one ounce under a state record i'm gonna yeah. cry i'll go oh, you sure. know i'm like Man, I'd rather be five pounds off than oh, just yeah. a couple ounces yeah. under. I ain't lying. So, man, and Caleb, when that thing hit the scales, I had it on. I had it on. I got it on camera. I was there for that. Right. right. I yes. was there for that. You seen everything. I know, man. It was. It was. It was insane. When it hit the scales, and it was bobbing up and down. I was like, oh no. Oh yeah. No. 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 Because it kept going up and down. I was like, no. Okay. And then it stopped at seventy eight point nine. Man, the emotions. At that point, it was a celebration. So I was so happy that it it was it was the best day of my life. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, it was the best day of my life, man. It's one of the most memorable times for me because your friends were there. You had support. The game warden that was there was cool. He was awesome, (laughs) dude. No doubt. I mean, to show up in the middle of the night like that, and Mm -hmm. he was super awesome. I mean. 
it truly was a remarkable moment. Yes, it was. It was a night to remember. And, and that just goes back to show you, Caleb, that it's all about being in the right place at the right time with the right bait. Exactly. And that, and I was in the right, and I was just in the right place at the right time with the right bait. Is all it was. I love that. I love it. Yeah. And uh, got that certification. And you know, I tell anglers now. You know, back then, uh, it's five thousand dollars if you have our apparel on in the picture with the state record, and it's ten thousand if you're using our rods. That's right. Because now, if you're using catch the fever rods, I ain't lying. You have the opportunity to get twenty thousand dollars just for catching on our rods, with an additional five thousand if you can get in that picture and and have all your 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 stuff there where you've got the the brand visibly shown in the picture. You can get up to twenty five thousand dollars. And I'm be honest with you, there's a lot of great anglers back, you know, where you fish. There's a lot of opportunity for that state record to be beaten, and I think I think we'll see it again. I do. I do. It, it'll be a sad day for me, unless it's me. Again. Unless it's you. <laughs> then it'll be the best day. Then it'll be the, you'll be twenty five thousand dollars richer. I ain't so, yeah. But man, like, and that's just just all the reason to use the catch the fever gear, Caleb. Right. Just why why wouldn't you? you I, get they're awesome a, looking rods. They have the best action I've ever felt. Right. Super dependable. Right. And, and and if you are in the right place at the right time, you'll win twenty five thousand dollars. And you get it all right there, right at once. But it, it it's crazy. I mean, guys, are like, what's the odds of me catching a state record? And I'm like, that people don't realize all the close calls. We do because we get the phone call when somebody's close. I've literally in the last two months have been called three times, and people were off within a half an ounce of their state record. Oh my god! Yes, sir. That's the thing. When somebody catches a state record, it blows up. Yes. But the close calls, nobody ever hears about. Right. There's been three close calls just in the last 60 days with a half an ounce. Oh, my gosh. Somebody getting 25,000. It happens way more than you think. And if you're fishing a body of water, you're applying these techniques that you hear on the Fishing mm-hmm. People podcast, talking with the anglers who've done it, who continue to be consistent on the water, you have a very good chance oh absolutely so, and with the conservation of these fish and the, yep. and the sport growing and there's yep. so many more people fishing and, yep. and practicing catch and release that's a big man, part of it. these fish are getting enormous yeah think of a 140 something pound blue cat like that thing is i know humongous. absolutely massive uh, it's 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 insane and, and and they're they're just gonna keep getting bigger yes absolutely and that's another thing you know before catch the fever started um we would see catch, you know, we would see state records caught and they throw it on ice. They're like, this is state record. I ain't letting this thing. <laughs> they throw it on ice and uh, they'd go weigh it in and, and it'd be the state record. And I remember seeing stuff like that happen growing up. But with Catch the Fever, we decided that, you know what, to be to eligible for that payout, you have to release the fish alive. Sure. And, 100%. you know, it, it has to be released alive. And, Joey Baird and talking with his story, um, you know, he told the, the game warden had told him, you know, he said, we're throwing on ice. And he said, we'll be out there in the morning. And he said, no, I have to do everything I can to try to keep this fish alive. Absolutely. And um, that's what we're going for. Even if something happens uh, before the state record uh, payout was even there. If somebody called a state record or they thought it was a state record, they were throwing it on ice. That Ain't fish lying. was 99%. I don't know of anybody was that close. was like, <laughs> you know what? I've got a state record. I'm probably going to just go ahead and release it and just yeah. tell my buddies about it. No, it went on ice. It don't work like that. I grew up yeah. watching catfish. It, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There might have been a few old timers who didn't care about that stuff, but most of the time it was going on ice. Yes. So that's what we're hoping with, with that payout, is to change that curve. And to make guys where they automatically default throw a nice, they say, I have to do everything I can to keep, it to alive. keep this fish alive. And it's a really big deal when a, when a big fish like that dies. But they tried to do everything they could. And the good thing about if you did try to do everything you could and that fish dies, man, we have an amazing opportunity there for science to come in and say, we'd like to get that ear bone. We'd like to sure. take that fish and dissect it. And so we can learn more uh-huh. about our efforts as conservation. We can know how old that fish was. You know, we can tell, you know, about how big fish get in our bodies of water and stuff. It 
it's in every bad situation, I guess you'd say, it, there can be something really good come from it. So we encourage guys to practice catch and release. It, we want to see these fish get bigger. And we want to, you know, release these fish so somebody else can can catch them. And uh, it's so important to, uh, there's plenty of smaller fish if you want to have a fish fry. Exactly. But, you know, consider selective harvest. You know, throw those big ones back because if 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 people don't do that, then memories like that just, it, it'd be hard to exist. That's right. 100%. So, I think it's getting better every day, though. Every it day, it's getting better. It is. It makes me so happy because things are so different now than six, seven years ago um, when I was fishing. It's just, and it's not all because of us. It's just, there's a lot of, of, of great people out there that's that's getting people to consider a different way of thinking, and we're seeing a lot bigger fish, yeah. and it's just making it more fun to get out on the river. It is. So, uh, but... Man, that's awesome. Todd, I, I can't thank you enough for coming on the podcast today. It's it's literally so much good information, you know, fishing rivers and how to target a state record flathead. And uh, I'm just so thankful that, you know, we got to get linked up. You're using our products and I got to meet you and we got to stay friends. And oh yeah, you traveling Absolutely. out here to try to help educate anglers in telling your story about what you're passionate about. Yes, sir. Well, it's awesome to be here, Kayla. I really appreciate you uh, considering me on the show. Oh, yeah. You're absolutely somebody who had planned on calling. I mean, uh, you're the king of North Carolina for flatheads. Oh, come and, on, man. I mean, like I said, there's <laughs> there's things I consider when I have somebody on the podcast. It's one, how consistent. I, I like consistency. Um, and because consistency to me, it, it, it shows me that that person, they're able to adapt you know, like we talked about when the water rises and when it drops, they're able to adapt. And I want to know what I need to do when, you know, conditions change. That's right. So again, thank you so much for being on the podcast and uh, having you on here. Guys, we appreciate you tuning in uh, to this week's episode of the Fish and Fuel podcast. Be sure to check us out across all the major platforms, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, uh, Spotify. You can download it. Listen to this podcast while you work. Also on YouTube. So be sure to check it out as and, and check for new episodes as we interview some really great anglers who really has a wealth of knowledge in teaching us how to be uh, more effective uh, with our time on the water. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll catch you on the next Fish and Fuel podcast. <laughs>